and they were, you know, and they're all faffing about and the cameras aren't ready and kind of like this, but on a much bigger scale, as you know. And, uh, and it, they started playing it and I turned to the Katie yeah. and Vicky next to me and just, can you? And I went, I want you to know. <laughs> and then the, we started laughing and messing about. And then, but I, I, what made me laugh was I was doing the whole, an older version of me, <laughs> is she perverted like me? And I came out from behind the desk and did to all the camera, would she go down on you in a theater? <laughs> and that's the bit they cut from there. Yeah, like they, that's, enough, that, yeah. that's the bit they cut. So I went up to Alana's it? afterwards and I said, um, I said, I just want you to know I did a full rendition and they cut away me doing, would she go down on you in a theater? And she went, oh, Forest Oral, I love that. Lovely. <laughs> 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 and I was like, Nice to meet you. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Ready? <laughs> Sorry. Edit. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am once again with my good friend, Mr. Ian Marber, award-winning health journalist, nutrition therapist, author, gentleman. <laughs> what else? Oh, that's kind of everything, I think. Oh, not bad going, though. Not bad. Not no. bad going. Um, basically, I threw a load of questions into the Freaks group. Uh, that's not what I did. I asked the Freaks group for their questions and they gave us loads. So we're going to go straight into those and then we're going to discuss things um, that are very much topical at the moment. Are you ready? I am. Go for it. Um, as usual, poor Ian just gets dropped in at the deep end. I do have some notes and I have some questions and obviously what happens is I don't really read through them. Mm. They're collated. So that we're coming in fresh and then it also stops us not saying things. Because it's good when we both go, oh, bleh. <laughs> Also dangerous, but we'll see how we go. Okay. We can always I'll be, I'll be very well-tempered. <laughs> okay. It. Um, how quickly can your skin show a reaction to certain foods, either intolerances or skincare products? I can do that. But in terms of food, if you have a food allergy. Food allergy or intolerance, they're two different let's things. Let's do two different things. Okay, all right. Um, let me just explain the difference between an allergy. An allergy involves um, a situation in which antibodies are created very quickly. So we're used to the sort of anaphylactic shock and that's the dramatic example of that. Uh, and that certain immune cells are produced and you get histamine, you get a big rushing. I mean, I'm, I'm allergic, properly allergic to garlic and I had mm -hmm. garlic 10 days ago for the first time in 10 years by mistake. Um, and you know, the inside of my mouth, I'd forgotten what it was like. I, I was actually in um, South Africa and I was on my way to the airport. Oh, This lovely. was a terrible time to have it. Anyway, uh, inside of my mouth, I got little like bubble wrap lump sort of mm. thing. Um, had to lie down, room went uh, uh, sort of slightly dark and I got very dizzy. Anyway, that's an allergy and people mm -hmm. who have food allergies tend to know about them. Yeah. Food intolerance mm -hmm. involves also antibodies, but slightly different ones. Mm -hmm. So they're much more subtle and um, we have to remind ourselves that not everyone has a food intolerance. Mm -hmm. So those very people, trendy. It, well, I think the idea is that some foods are better for you than others. That may be true, but a food intolerance test won't necessarily show you that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of food intolerance testing is incredibly inaccurate, mm -hmm. and a, a, a misunderstanding of, of some of the basic sort of scientific testing methods. So um, the answer to the question is that if you have food intolerance, it won't necessarily show immediately. Yeah. Um, a food allergy may, because you'll get swelling and yeah, you'll get hives, etc. Um, but food intolerance won't necessarily show in your skin at all. No use whatsoever, but thanks. <laughs> but at least it's a good answer. Yeah. I mean, it's good to not go, oh yeah, your skin's going to do this, da 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 da. Uh, in skincare wise, it's the same thing. If you're having a reaction to a product, you'll know about it. You'll probably get burning, you'll be itchy. Itchy's a clear, oh, I'm itching. Yeah. That's more of a reaction. If you're intolerant to something, you might just find that your skin feels really hot. Um, you might. I mean, it's weird because things like retinol are supposed to cause a slight intolerance and that's yeah. why you go flaky. Yeah. I mean, it's not the only reason, but... So, I mean, your answer was much more specific and very eloquent. I'll just stop okay. talking. Okay, I've heard it said that gut health affects every part of our bodies, including even mental health. What part does gut health play in your skin? Very good question. That Freak. is a good question. Um, I will answer that as best I can. I'm not a gut health expert, yeah. but uh, the gut bacteria, the microbiome, as it's called, um, has many different roles, one of which is actually the penultimate stage of breaking down some nutrients. So you could argue that those nutrients that are involved in uh, maintaining good skin actually require a, a healthy digestion and the, that obviously gut bacteria is part of that. Um, when it comes to specifics, we have to remember there are trillions of these 
bacteria mm -hmm. and there are many different types. A lot of them fall under two main sort of come within two main families which is lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and within that there are lots of different subtypes and, and things that belong to those families. Um, in a way what we know about gut health is quite uh, it's really not that sophisticated because what we don't know is how individual uh, bacteria respond with each other. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, we need a certain amount of the good stuff and uh, some of the unwanted stuff actually can live quite happily in the gut, even as long as there's it's not enough of the good stuff. And, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm trying to give a, a direct answer, but I'm not sure I can because we don't know for sure exactly what the gut bacteria will do. However, when it comes to skin and when it comes to certain uh, uh, conditions like sort of rosacea, for instance, mm -hmm. I know that working in a, in a clinical setting, working with people who've got rosacea, when I give them a specific amount of uh, probiotics, good bacteria, sometimes more bifido than lacto mm -hmm. or vice versa, depends on the individual, we can see a really good response and a reduction in the redness and all the, the uh, discomfort of rosacea. But it's it's kind of individual, yeah. um, but on a, a, a general scale, if you have uh, to improve your gut bacteria, you need foods that contain probiotics, not just the capsules, not just the liquids. So that might mean uh, miso soup, kefir, uh, parmesan's a good one, one of my favorites. Is it? Yeah, parmesan contains good bacteria. I mean, not that much. But, um, Did you see my excitement then? Yeah. No, oh, no, no, oh really. finally, it's something I can get on board with. No, 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 it's like, it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like some of the other nutrients that we want are actually contained in alcohol and beer. So, you know, oh, yippee. Um, but uh, uh, if anyone has problems with their skin, then I think a good place to start is to take a probiotic oh, yeah. capsule. Totally. Um, and, then, and that kind of proves that there's a link, but I yeah. can't say what the exact link is for everyone. Also, it's because, like you say, everything is so individual, it would be hard to test, even under a clinical setting, because you'd have to have so many different people, and they would all give such a different result. But also there's so many variables. Yeah. I know we've talked about, about this before, but you know, the idea that, let's say, um, something is right for someone else, yeah, it's um, the same skin care. It's, it, it's so, there are so many variables, and those variables are genetics, those are, uh, are lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. um, they, you know, gut bacteria, which ones, not mm -hmm. necessarily having the right amounts of all of them. You might have extra ones mm -hmm. as well. But, you know, we don't know. We don't moment. know what we don't know. No, exactly. Which is also a good motto for life, let's be fair. Yes. Right, okay. Best supplements. We're going to come on to supplements heavily a bit later, but best supplements in particular Recommendations for PCOS ladies, please. Ah, okay, PCOS, polycystic mm -hmm. ovary syndrome. Um, this is a situation uh, in which, uh, and it's actually directly linked to food, by the way, it's not necessarily supplements. Um, so uh, a lot of people who have PCOS will actually find they have increased amounts of testosterone, mm -hmm. and that can be gently, not 100%, but have a, a connection to how much insulin you're producing, right. which in itself, this is not the best way of describing it, could be linked to how many carbohydrates and your balance between the food yeah. groups, that's fats, carbs, and protein. So I find that when working with people, people with PCOS, uh, what we do is we give them a certain ratio of protein to carbohydrates, that mean, doesn't mean no carbs, yeah. it may not mean fewer, fewer carbs, um, but actually it means a ratio between them with a little bit of fat and eating food at pre not precise times, but two or three hours apart. So you might have breakfast, snack, right. lunch, snack, To keep dinner. their insulin levels steady. Yeah, well, because what will then happen is by keeping your glucose levels steady mm. and by cre creating, by having food that breaks down slowly and that's combining the food groups, what can happen is that you get a drip feed of glucose. Whereas if you had a you know load of sugar or um, a, a cereal, for instance, in the morning and, and mm. an orange juice, what may happen is you actually get a higher amount of glucose, which in turn requires that there's more insulin produced, which then has a knock-on effect on yeah. testosterone. So essentially, because everyone protein and carbs. In a nutshell. Okay, protein and carbs, little and often. Breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, mm -hmm. and the protein could be uh, you might have some. Uh, porridge rather than a great big bowl of porridge you might have a, uh, a teacup full of porridge just to give you an idea of the proportions and a second teacup which would have be half filled with uh, walnuts and the rest could be berries so you've got protein carbohydrates you've got some fat in the walnuts you've got some right. extra fiber there but so nothing the creation... traditionally sort of white carbish uh, yes, but although you know the oats do create it, it's yeah. not necessarily the individual carb it's the combination right so truth That's be told key. you could have a sugar lump yeah and a walnut, and that would, the walnut, the protein and the fiber, and uh, the fat in the walnut would ameliorate the effect of the sugar lump. Don't do it. No. That's it in, the, in its coarsest way. Okay. Thank you for that, sir. 
Right, oh, you're going to love this one. Um, I'm going to ask it, but I think I'll end up answering it. Okay. How can we eat to support our skin through perimenopause and menopause, please, as it's just getting drier and drier? Is there anything in your arena okay. that you um, would say? Because I know what I would say. Okay, if it's um, dry skin, then of course the essential fats are really important. So mm -hmm. we're talking about omega-3, more than a 6 and 9. There mm -hmm. are omega-3, 6 and 9 are the main ones. Omega-3 is the ones that's found in oily fish, uh, salmon, mackerel, sardines. Less so in tuna these days. You yeah. may not know that tuna has been down downgraded to no longer being an oily fish. Yeah. But anyway, um, you can also find it in purslane, which is a herb that's good for vegans and vegetarians. You can also find a form of omega-3 called DHA, and that's mm -hmm. going to be in walnuts and chia seeds. It's not Marine oils are better, so the animal source ones are better. But that doesn't mean the DHA, which is the vegetarian version, is not doesn't work. It's mm -hmm. just not quite as good. Um, so I would suggest oily fish, nuts and seeds. Uh, make sure you get a lot of, uh, obviously, hydration, but also you need the good fats as well. Okay, um, and skin-wise, skin I would say you, you're getting drier because your ability within the uh, dermis and epidermis is reduced to hold on to oil and water. So basically, you're, you're not imagining it, your skin is just getting drier. Um, 20 years ago, I could use just a really light lotion and I was good to go, and now I'm almost at the point where I'm like, maybe I just need some grease. Really? Um, that, I, that's for men as well. I mean, I'm you know, yeah. 56, and, yeah. and I find that, um, you know, those those ads remember those ads where you had sort of Jane Fonda saying for an older skin and I thought there's no difference and now no there is a difference yeah um I would make sure you just focus on barrier repair first so look for things that have ceramides and it's the same thing oils the fatty acids um and people like Paula's Choice make them um if you just google like ceramide moisturizer you'll be inundated um but that's why we talk about them a lot in skincare because there is definitely it's basically sort of like putting your coat back on it when you get to the menopausal stage especially it's almost like your raincoat's been torn from you okay. so you have no protection um does a low fat diet this is a good one okay does a low fat diet have a noticeable negative impact on the condition of your skin and then in brackets hair and nails i very like these eloquent questions i uh, very like them yes i very like them too <laughs> um yes it does yeah. The same reason we, we the, the yeah. last answer was there because uh, a low fat diet means not necessarily uh, by. I mean, I'm wondering, does that mean low fat foods or foods that are naturally low in fat? So, for instance, no, I think well, actually choosing I think low fat alternatives. It's usually, a woman answering the question. I don't want to be sexist, but in our group, we're heavily okay female it's, heavy. I think it's women saying they don't eat a lot of fat. Okay, a low fat I diet think. will affect your skin. Yeah. Um, had that said, let's look at the background of why low fat was so oh important. My God. Um, low fat was was uh, really encouraged because fat contains nine calories per gram, carbohydrates contain four, protein around four as well. So a way to reduce your calorie intake was to go for low fat foods. Yeah, and then so, <laughs> and in order to give it texture and flavour, sugars were added back in. So if we look at low fat yogurt, uh, take out the fat and to give it the texture and flavour, then often it has more sugars. So. I would say go for full fat yeah. and eat in moderation and nice. you should notice the difference in your skin. Just so you know there may be a little bit of a weird edit there because we have workmen repaving right outside the window so sorry if it's a little disjointed because we were going on and on eventually the noise just became me going Argh! like that but we're going to talk loudly it'll be fine. Um, I sense when we go here you will we will be on the same page yes. but for different reasons. Okay. I'm asked all the time about this in uh, topically yes and it's one of my most asked questions about supplements which I only answer oh, okay. from my point of view yeah like what I take and do and don't know so does digestive collagen have any effect on the skin um, interestingly enough digestive coll the, the, well, collagen is a protein and when we eat protein the uh, proteins are broken down by various digestive methods including hydrochloric acid when it gets into your digestive system, what happens is that your gut and the rest of your body doesn't go, oh, collagen from a pot, I'll pop it in your skin. It doesn't do that. <laughs> what it does is uh, it just puts it anywhere else, for instance. So let's say you're taking protein for different reasons. Um, does that mean it doesn't go to your skin, it goes elsewhere? On paper, it shouldn't work. However, I did take some collagen for a while and it didn't make any difference to my skin. But uh, there's a butt coming. Um, my nails grew slightly more quickly. Um, but apart from that, I didn't notice any difference. Now, I know that other skincare 
experts, um, one of whom I can think of who, who absolutely swears by it and says it's very important. And on paper you can say that we have less collagen as we grow older, etc, mm. etc, et therefore getting more. Um, it is a way of getting more protein because a lot of people don't want to eat more because yeah. they're maybe concerned about um, oh, having too much protein. So um, it can work, but I wouldn't make it your primary source of protein. Um, and that sounds like a bit of an iffy answer, but on paper it shouldn't work, frankly. That your, yeah. your digestion doesn't work And that it's way. exactly the same for topical applied collagen. Um, uh, you cannot topically apply collagen and have it affect the collagen in your skin. It's the wrong place. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I think I... Of all the things to take, um, a lot of supplements, a lot of supplementation is built on fear. So in other words... Oh, we're coming to that. Okay, if you don't have enough of X, this will happen. Yeah. And so um, when we talk about supplements, you know, the, 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 the good question is, if I ask you where vitamin C is, and you say the answer is third shelf down in the bathroom cupboard, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> it should be in your fridge. And in what food? Oh, my vitamin C. Sweet potato, kiwi fruits, peppers, citrus fruits. All um, the good stuff. All the good stuff. So you so, can and eat also, loads of it. And uh, while we're at it, in those foods, vitamin C will have its cofactors. Yeah. So other things that work and synergistically it. with it. And so you get the full package. Um, and it should always be about food, not supplements. That doesn't mean that supplements on occasion and targeted and for a very good reason and with good advice mm -hmm. don't have a place because they do. Okay. Because the next question weirdly is vitamin C, is it better for your skin to get it from food or topically? Oh, food. But doesn't it act differently topically? Yes, it yeah, does. So, so I think things, you need they? both. It's a double pronged approach. Yeah. You need but vitamin C topically. How often would you put vitamin C on your face? I do it daily. Okay. Um, I mean, you should have vitamin C in your food daily because it's water-based yeah. and can't be stored in the body. So you should make sure that you have Just vitamin C every day. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know what I might do after this, which I haven't done before? Yeah. I might get you to list like what my lot love, because it's me. Yeah. I like a list. Okay. So like top fives. I'll give you a homework for top <laughs> fives. Okay. And there's like, well, no one's going to hold you to it. It's just... Yeah. As a rough guide, we always okay. call it, and I've now figured out that's why a lot of brands say a lot of things like rough guide to travelling. Yeah. They call it a rough guide because the minute you say it's this, you get, no, it's not, it's this, and it's this, yeah. and it's this, okay. you know? So we'll do a rough guide to okay. Mr. Homework. Marber's Homework. top fives. Okay. Um, we've actually just covered this, rosacea. I want to work oh. on anti-aging and appearance of skin texture, but afraid to use anything due to my rosacea. If my skin reacts to topical vitamin C, um, is it worth taking orally? Uh, it's worth taking orally anyway from food. food. <laughs> um, uh, you can top up your vitamin C with uh, a supplement. Mm -hmm. But a good one that's not full of sugar. A good one that's not full of sugar, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, but I think, again, if your answer to where vitamin C comes from is Holland and Barrett or Boots, <laughs> it actually comes from Sainsbury's. We'll definitely do your top five vitamin C foods. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to go straight into supplements now because we could be here a long time. And a lot of them are left with, I actually, stop, I'm going to do this one and then we're going to do supplements because okay. I want to cover this. Can having lots of oil in your diet make your skin oily? Um, no. <laughs> oh, um, I'm just going to put that, well, what, what they, I think, oil. I think people, I, I think, and I could be wrong, but this is how the question came in, I think they're meaning could it cause acne. Oh, I see. That, that's what I'm taking it from, or like a greasy skin. Okay, um, unlikely, there is... There is a school of thought, and I, I can't say that. Good oil. I'm uh, thinking good oil. Okay, you good oil, no. But there is a school of thought that says that when you have a lot of saturated fat, oh god, yeah, one of the unwanted yeah. fats, yeah, 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 then uh, this will. There's a small amount. There's a potential for some of the good fats, the omega three, mm -hmm. not to be absorbed so well. Yeah. So therefore, supposedly you can get oily skin, but I don't know that it's a dramatic effect. It's not like I would. You have a KFC one night, the next day you've got oily skin. It's not no, like no, no. But I would counteract it by saying. Yes, and you can only notice a bit, notice it visibly if your only your diet is takeaway or yeah. saturated fat. So if you're if you're having a rough week and you're doing a no judgment and you're doing fish and chips, yeah, and then more chips and a KFC and a McDonald's and that's your kind of student <laughs> diet. A bit hungry now. Um, <laughs> then you might find that your skin is not its best. No. If, however, your diet is salmon, yeah, nuts, See. seeds. Yeah then your skin will be very markedly different. It so be, but the odd occasional one, no. But if your diet is predominantly good oils, 
yes, it will have a good effect on your skin. Just to, I would say. Just to add one more. Just in case you didn't need to know that we were in central London. Yes. Hirons, sirens yeah. with hirons, and we've got um, it. <laughs> just to add one more thing, that saturated fat is not all bad. We yeah. do need some saturated fat, so yeah. you know, we shouldn't fear it too much. It's just having too much. It shouldn't be the deep. main thing on your plate at every no, meal. Absolutely not. It's the best way of putting it. Yeah. Okay, let's do supplements okay. because we have quite a few different questions and I've wanted okay. to talk to you about something in particular since they landed on my desk, okay? Ugh. Okay, which changes to diet, food, supplements, have the biggest or give noticeable change to your skin? And now we've got, this is where it came from, top three, top five, best changes I can make to my diet on a limited budget, things like that, and are the answers different, and this is why we're gonna have to do a blog post, okay. are the answers different in age, i.e. a person in their 20s to 30s, and then a person who's older like us, 40 to 50 and plus, Yeah. Where do you sit in, if you're only going to take one as a rough, you know, blah, 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 do you need anything when you're in your 20s and 30s? Do you need anything when you're menopausal? Yeah. I know what I'm going to say. And then I want to hone down into specifics. Well, let's, let's firstly need. Yeah. Do we need anything? Unlikely. Can yeah. we benefit from something? Very possibly. Good. Okay. Um, I think the core supplements that we need when you're younger or can benefit from benefit from would be an omega-3, uh, a vitamin D, because everyone in the UK is advised to take vitamin D. Um, there is an argument for when you're older to take a B12, simply because our digestive capability will reduce very slightly, so we may not get as much B12 from our diet. Mm -hmm. If you're vegan or vegetarian, you should be looking at B12 anyway, and vitamin D. And but where if, would they get that from? Um, uh, if, you're, if you're vegetarian or vegan, mm -hmm. then you'll need a source of vitamin D mm -hmm. too. Uh, D3, which is the most common form, actually comes from sheep's oil, the sheep's lanolin, actually. So you want D2 if you're vegetarian mm -hmm. or vegan, which you can get. I think there's an algae, um, seaweed kind of derived one, um, and I know a couple of brands, but um, D3 is what the rest of us will be taking. Okay. Um, you know, supplements are a huge yeah. topic, and huge. Um, uh, we just to, to sort of pull back slightly about what we need is that where they're sold to us as essentials. Yeah. Um, and the marketing is is very compelling. Um, and as with anything, if you sell the problem, then the solution and, uh, and offer a solution. Offer your product as a solution, or sometimes just you know sell the problem. Then you're creating a little bit of fear, a little bit of anxiety. Um, you don't need supplements, and I, I don't necessarily agree that they just end up as being expensive. We, I know that you know, yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard yeah. some doctors say that. But if you think you need supplements, look at your diet, and I think um, that's you know that's what my advice is for all clients when they come and see me. However, sometimes a client and we need some persuasion. So let's say, for instance, I say to a client, um, I want you to have more magnesium in your diet because mm -hmm. you're getting muscle cramping, um, and perhaps you're not sleeping so not well. Sleeping well yeah. um, so they're kind of not sure, but to, to, to convince them that I'm right, I might ask them to take a supplement of say 200 milligrams of magnesium last thing at night. When their sleep is then improved, it's much easier to yeah. see, right, we found the mechanism, we've hit the button, it works, got let's look tangible. at your diet. Um, I think that supplementation in the long term uh, should only be done under proper advice. And with respect, the proper advice comes from people who are trained. Um, it's very easy to diss them and say, oh, they're, they're, they're expensive, we, it's not worth it. But, you know, not someone who sells them. I said this before, a lot of people who uh, practice nutrition actually get a tiny kickback from when they recommend supplements. Mm -hmm. Now, that's their income, that's their choice. I'm not putting myself as being morally superior. I don't. I don't actually get a kickback from them. Let's be honest, if I got 100 grand a month, I might recommend. But, you know, for the pennies it happens, it's just not worth it. Um, so get advice from someone who knows what they're talking about, and their job isn't to sell supplements, and that also includes people who work in health food stores. Yeah. If you go into a health food store and you say, I'm, that looking, I have, for... I'm looking for vitamin D2, then hopefully they will help you. Mm. Um, if, they, if you say what supplements I should take, the answer should be, well, you know, go and see someone and come back to us, but that's never the answer. It's no, always... They always sell. Yeah, exactly. It's their job. It's understandable. Mm. So... My, my um, top three and top five, I'll do some homework for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make sure it's on cool. there. Um, but I think everyone should be looking at omega-3, vitamin D, um, and then it gets individual. Some people, for instance, we generally low in iron. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of um, you know, women who are menstruating, not at the time, but of that age, um, an iron supplement with some vitamin C, vitamin C enhances the iron yeah. uptake and changes it from um, uh, to two or three. Anyway, it enhances it. 
Um, and beyond that, it's individual get advice. And although coming to see someone like me is not cheap, a couple of hundred quid, you will save that by not wasting it on supplements. Pretty much. And also, you know, I say this bit of vanity. I'm good at my job. I don't have people come back 10 times, usually once or twice over six months. And so it's mm. a good investment. Um, but you know, if you if you open your kitchen cabinet, your bathroom cabinet, and you have a lot of supplements, think twice about why you're taking them. Yeah, okay. Now. I've been dreading this. Okay, but these, this landed on my desk earlier this year, right? And I got loads of questions about them and I was tagged in it embarrassingly on Insta and I just thought I'm not touching it with a barge pole because we got a couple we thought that's not too bad, that seems normal. Yeah. And then I got one I just thought, what is this? So I'm talking about Evolution, uh, which is by Bobby Brown. Who, by the way, is a personal friend, so this is... Not my problem. Okay, um, not my problem. <laughs> so... And I'm not gunning for it at all, but so this, so take for example this, this is the beauty collagen, beauty from the inside out. Collagen is found in skin, hair and nails, 15 grams of collagen per serving. There are 14 servings in this. This is a two week supply, right? Okay. Um, and it's bovine collagen, so immediately you can't have this if you're vegetarian or vegan. Tell, tell me about this, just as a, as a starting point. Well, we talked about collagen a while ago. Yeah. Um, I think... You know, if those people who benefit from taking collagen who notice a difference, but you've got to notice a difference. Yeah. If you're not noticing it, don't bother. If you're noticing a difference, then it's worth taking. Not necessarily that one, there are others as well. I don't yeah. know how expensive this is. Um, I'll find but, the price. Okay. Now this one is Beauty Bubbles Recharge. My problem is Bubbles. it's linked to beauty. Okay. Right, so I have, I have two big problems. One is that it's called beauty and beauty collagen and a beauty gummy. That calling it beauty to me is problematic. That's, as an aside, taking all of my own thing out of it. Um, literally says, Beauty Bubbles Recharge is a food supplement with sweetener containing vitamin B12, minerals, botanical ingredients, and a botanical source of caffeine. Contains caffeine, not recommended for children and pregnant women. Fine. Take one tablet a day, da 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 da, -da. Uh, Thoughts on these ones? Can I look at you? Knock yourself out. Um, supports energy. Interestingly enough, the um, although it's sold as beauty bubbles, it says supports energy um, because you've got B12 contributes to the reduction of fatigue, um, which is probably why the B12 is in there, and potassium contribute, contributes to normal muscle function. Neither of those legal claims have got anything to do with beauty, so um, it, it kind of doesn't make sense. Can you legally say that? Um, I don't know. Legally, I would say that it's not perhaps the most accurate. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's a, a range that supposedly um, supports beauty. Now, in the United States, where these come from, they don't, they're not constrained yeah, by legalities like B12 and whatever. So if you imagine it without that, yeah. it feels quite different. So and there's a bit of a. did that and cut out the, sorry, the, sort yeah. of the claims and just said supports energy. There's a bit of a disconnect there. And I think, um, you know, uh, there's. there's uh, there's decent amounts in here, but um, interestingly, the rest of the um, ingredients, which are green tea, grape seed, sorry, grape skin extracts, pomegranate powder, coconut water powder, there's no um, claims about those um, because there are no legal claims. So, uh, as with many supplements, what people do is they put in a substance that has a legal claim. So, for instance, there's no legal claims about probiotics, right. none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and a brand, one I like, um, actually put a little bit of vitamin C in their probiotic and the vitamin C has a legal immune claim So now right. they can say for immunity based on the vitamin C Wow, but it's um, mainly a probiotic. But it's 95% it's probiotic. Speaking about percentages. Yes. These. Now this is where I was like mm. What? Okay, so this is the beauty gummy. It says beauty never tasted so good. Again, the word beauty is on there twice Which is like, well, talk to me about biotin. So this is a basically a biotin gummy, and then I'm going to show you this inky list. Um, and the, the strap line is, I have always believed the better you take care of yourself on the inside, the better you look on the outside. I think that strap line's on all the products. So that's obviously the strap line they're going with. But that's what, you know, she does believe that. I mean, Bobby does believe that, and it's true. Then why? Yeah. You look at that inky list and tell me why I'm annoyed. Oh dear. Okay, because this uh, the claim is biotin contributes to normal maintenance of hair and skin. That's First of all, do you know how much biotin you would need as a rough guy okay, um, to have healthy hair? Okay, uh, the RDA, that's a recommended daily allowance, the amount we should have every day is 50 micrograms, mm -hmm. which is 0 0.05 of a, of a milligram. And how much okay. is in that? Uh, 20, so this has got... Uh, 
the recommended quantity is two, and this is your 20,000. So a lot, which is useful. So that, that, in, that, in fairness, that is, okay, my, I have a problem with my hair, my nails are brittle, yeah. maybe this might help, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But However, the ingredients list. Um, the ingredients list. Uh, sugar, glucose syrup, citric acid, sodium citrate, acidic acid. Is, it a, a, is there uh, a sorry, way to acid. take biotin okay. without putting it in what is essentially... A delicious skittle. It is a delicious skittle. These, are, delicious these anyway. are sweets. These are sweets. These are sweets. Now, my, my, well, the, the disconnect, which is a great word you used earlier, was Bobby Brown did this whole thing about how to give up sugar and sugar is really bad for you. And I, it was a really big, like, she did a blog post about it. You have to give up sugar. These are sweets. Okay. There's, firstly, there's not an, an awful lot of sugar in them. Okay. So you're not going to get anywhere near your max a day of 20 grams, whatever it is, or 30 for a man. You don't get anywhere near that. However, um, you can get let, two things. First of all, I don't like the infantilization of consumers by Dummy. making them into sweets. Okay, we it's don't need sweet. sweets. We are grown-ups. If you decide, or your your well-placed and balanced nutrition therapist decides that you need biotin, you can get it from liver. You can get it from almonds. You can get it from avocado. You can get it from eggs. So if you and also in those foods, you're going to get the cofactors. Yeah. So the, if we look at the foods that eat that have claims about hair, uh, so the nutrients you've got zinc copper and selenium okay so in those foods if i put a typical day together which i will put together for your blog but you could have some porridge with almonds in the morning you could have some um uh, prawns at lunchtime uh, some cashews and yogurt in the afternoon i'll, I'll do this mm -hmm. for your, your blog post a typical day you will get all the other cofactors. you'll get your zinc you'll get your biotin you'll get your selenium and you'll get your zinc so you've got everything there and this is an interesting part about supplements by isolating the nutrients we, uh, there, there's something called nutritionalism, which is where we isolate the nutrients from the greater good of the food. And we only look at the benefit of this. Now, um, there's nothing wrong with taking a biotin supplement if it works for you and you know what you're doing, you get the proper advice. You can get them in capsule form or in tablet form. You do not need to have a sugary sweet. It's a sweet. I mean, they're delicious, but it's a sweet. Yeah, I mean, but you could argue some people don't like swallowing tablets. Well, then they need to grow up. Well, some people can't swallow tablets. <laughs> so hard. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, you, <laughs> Don't uh, be hard. Uh, it does work for some people, um, but I would prefer to see them in capsule or tablet form, not in a sweetie. But you know, this infantilization thing is something I have Beauty about. Beauty never all tasted brands. so good. It doesn't. It doesn't always have to taste good. You know that whole thing, like we have to make sure we're sated at every stage. Yeah. You know, I take, I take things like with HRT and stuff. It tastes disgusting, but yeah. I take it because it keeps me out of prison. You know, I, I. When I take a supplement, for instance, if I take a powdered one and it tastes disgusting, if I think it's going to do me good, I don't care. No, you just take it. So, yeah. and I know she's your friend, but and I have no issue at all. But I do take issue with the word beauty being thrown about as a selling tool, and I have oh. it. The gummy thing annoyed me, but the fact that they're in—it's a pure, sh it's a sweet. Well, the, the two main ingredients: the first is sugar, and the second is glucose syrup, which is sugar. Um, there are better ways to get your biotin. Thanks. I'll just leave it there. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave you with homework. Um, okay. When's it due, Miss? Oh, I'll give you a week or so, don't oh. worry. Um, I will also list details below of where Ian practices and how you can get in touch with him if you want to. Please don't come for him for anything that I've said. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think we've kind of covered because the rest of it was all kind of similarly and linked okay. in and but you happy with quite a lot. Where I am, yeah. Covered? And I think you know if 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 someone wants to come and see me, um, then his details will be on Karen's blog. Yeah, and Insta um, and YouTube. And either. Insta, I'm not on YouTube. I am on Twitter. Love Twitter. He does um, have a bit of Twitter. I'll link you to Nutribollocks below. Yes, Nutribollocks. Nutribollocks, yes, Nutribollocks every Friday. Every Friday. Um, Ian brings out the two most ridiculous claims of the week, and we all have been to nominated vote. by other people. They're always nominated, and we have to pick the most ridiculous. What's been your favourite, like the most ludicrous? The most that ludicrous. I've seen quite a few. Then. And this, well, actually, I've had a few this week, but about the coronavirus. Of course. Um, about what to eat for coronavirus um, <laughs> and uh, homeopathy for coronavirus. That was one in the in the um, uh, Indian government advice. Oh, yeah. Amazingly. Yeah. Um, not that I am there to question such august organisations. Um, and there was one the other day. Yeah. The, oh, I think this one's going to be this week. Actually. It'll be a good one. Okay. Yeah, save yeah, it. It's going to be a good one. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, thank you for your questions. I'm sure we'll have you back because this always leads to more. We might make you a regular slot. I'd like that. And I won't throw your friend's products in front of you and say, tell me how awful this is in future. Okay, thank you. <laughs> She'll never <laughs> speak to me again. <laughs> I did the bad stuff. You're fine. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.